I grew up in a small town with lots of curiosity, I guess, and um, I really wanted to know about the world. That got me into science, and I went through um, the classic education. Um, I went to uh, MIT for a physics uh, degree, undergraduate, and I thought that would answer all my questions. I it didn't, and so I went to uh, Princeton University for my PhD in physics, and I learned more physics and uh, sort of the best teachers, the best theories. Um, I still felt like something was missing, but I kept, I, I did uh, postdoc at Cornell, I helped teach at, at both Princeton and uh, Cornell, and um, then I worked in the defense uh, department after that and other areas uh, of defense consulting, but I kept trying to figure out uh, something it seemed to me that our present physics did not really fully explain all the things that are out there and um, in the mid 80s I came across something that didn't fit my education it's called remote viewing and I began hearing about it the US government was doing it for a while first and uh, eventually it became public and it it told me that there's a connectedness that our science our, our universe is connected the consciousness is connected in a way that our present physics doesn't really account for. And that put me on the trail to figure out what the missing physics, the missing science was. And that's, that's led me here. <laughs> this is my book, my second book, there's Life Force here. It's this big, big thing, two, two inches thick. And it has a couple thousand references. And um, it has uh, uh, Mr. Trivedi's uh, work in here, too. It's, it's extraordinary. Uh, but the book really tries to understand consciousness, which is a, a force that is supposed to be in our physics. Uh, the quantum physics, when it was discovered 100 years ago, um, realized that consciousness is really important. But it's kind of ignored it. It hasn't really ever factored it in. And now with very powerful uh, uh, people like Mr. Trivedi, uh, and there are, you know, we're starting to see effects that say consciousness needs to be part of our science. So to me, that's the frontier, and that's part of my excitement. I knew Professor Rustam Roy, who's a full professor at Penn State University, um, hundreds and hundreds of papers, very eminent, created a department over there, and um, he told me about Mr. Trivedi in about 2009 or 2010, about five years ago. And um, he gave me some of the papers, some of the research that uh, they'd been doing, very, very impressive. And that got my curiosity up because um, Mr. Trivedi is interested in uh, promoting the science and helping understand how these things are possible. And that's what I was trying to do too. So this was very, very exciting to have someone of his caliber who can do these things. So that got my interest in all the work he's been doing. It seems to me that consciousness and the types of research and the types of uh, projects that Mr. Trivedi uh, is doing can really change the world, can make the world a much better place and solve a lot of the problems that we are facing today. Uh, it can bring in new technologies, and it can also help us to understand uh, this missing science of consciousness. So um, it, to me, it's just a, a wonderful opportunity. I'm very, very happy to be part of it. Well, I'll be helping out with um, analyzing and, and, and maybe conducting uh, some, of, some of the work in agriculture and nutraceuticals and other areas that he'll be doing. And um, I'll also um, be uh, looking at the, the physics and the science and seeing how we can push forward the frontier of understanding of how that all works. They all laughed when uh, Christopher Columbus told them that the world was round. Um, you know, this is the every pioneer has faced this problem of skepticism and resistance from others, and it takes years or decades or for people to come around usually uh, to accept you know these big pioneering breakthroughs um, so I think I think it I think a theory will help and lots of data will help and time will help um, or as Max Planck who invented uh, quantum physics said science advances funeral by funeral as the skeptics pass on and new 
blood comes in. Um, but I think in this case, it's going to happen faster because some of Mr. Trevetti's results are so powerful and so exciting that I think it's going to turn uh, people uh, quicker than that. There is some physics that is starting to try to understand consciousness. It's just the bare beginnings, but about 50 years ago, the Russians uh, discovered something called torsion, the torsion field. Nikolai Kozarev, a very eminent astrophysicist, uh, discovered it uh, in space. It's a property of space. Um, it's a type of twisting of space. It carries information. It can change the mass of objects. It can slow down or speed up time. Uh, and these are two things that in our present physics, there's just no way to explain them, but in the laboratory, they've been able to do them. And Mr. Trivetti has accomplished a, a similar thing. So in many ways, his things go further than what the Russians have done, but they're similar directions. So I think it's a clue that it's a similar kind of force. It's, so to me, this might be the beginnings of a physics of consciousness. I think this might be a way to start to understand how objects, uh, chemicals, people, consciousness can be affected at a distance. I, I believe that uh, right now our world, first of all, is, is in great need for some, some changes and some improvements. We have problems, and to me, consciousness, the discovery of the power of human consciousness uh, is a potential revolution. When, when we all shift from this kind of robotic, uh, unthinking lifestyle that most of us grow up with today to understand how powerful our consciousness can be to create or change our reality, to make it what we want it to be, that will be a revolution. And I think that the Trivedi effect helps to teach us to do that.